started. Carmen, it's all yours. Hello, everybody. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go through a quick list of questions for everybody, and I think I'm going to pick on Tracy first. Uh, Tracy Sales, please unmute yourself. Hi. Hello. Hi. All right, sorry, a little bit of reverb. <laughs> all right, Tracy. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. What does this club need to know? What makes Tracy tick? Oh, that wasn't the question you told me to answer. <laughs> um, I am up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Fergus is my very first otter hound. Before that, I had a coon hound. Um, definitely didn't prepare me for otter hound, but it did make me a better hound owner. Um, it's just Fergus and I, so we do a lot of things uh, with my sister's family, so her twins, her beagle. And um, yeah, we get stopped all the time because most people here have never seen or heard of an otter hound. Aww. Uh, what do you work as, Tracy? Oh, I work uh, in the communications field. Nice. Alrighty, so how long have you, or you said that Fergus was your first otter hound, correct? He is my first otter hound. Perfect. And how did you get involved in otter hounds? So I, as I said, I had a coon hound and I really, for some reason, liked the stubborn clowniness of the hounds. And I saw an otter hound in Westminster or on Westminster and thought they looked really cool and it'd be fun to have a scruffy dog. And uh, when I checked into it, I found a local breeder who had just happened to have a litter. And so Within a few weeks, I met my first otter hound and I had one at home. Aww. Classic love story. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of fun activities do you and Fergus do? So Yeah, I wrote down everything because we do lots of stuff. So we do, I guess, yeah, agility. We do urban agility or parkour, some people call it. We've done barn hunt, swimming lessons, tracking, hiking, shopping. I count that as an activity. Uh, camping, and we go to local dog events here so they have different fairs and things like that dog days that you bring your dog to um we do dog meetups and we do pack walks as well nice that sounds awesome uh so did you did you do anything like that with your coon hound as well was there like I, any sort of difference between the breeds uh, yes uh, my coon hound was very independent and very stubborn and he didn't want to, he didn't like training. He would do it once for the treat. He just really didn't enjoy those things. So no, I did, other than regular obedience class, I really didn't do a lot, any of that with him. So all of this was brand new to me for the first time. Aww. Love the mm -hmm. adventure too. So what do you like best about these activities? Um, I think it's a great opportunity to build a bond, uh, to build trust with your dog. And I think it's a great way to stay active. And of course they're fun and you meet a lot of people and other dog owners too. Nice. So there's, there's a lot of things listed. I'm kind of envious of that. It's like, oh my gosh, there's so many things, but. Uh, it's dabbling, it's dabbling. The one note actually I put in there too is that one thing I'll say for hounds or even other otter hounds. So I'm lucky and I'm here to stay in contact with the breeder who has five other otter hounds that we spend time with. And they're all very different. And that's the one note I put is that it's finding activities that fit with you and your dog. And so he tried barn hunt. I thought he'd be fantastic because he loves finding things. He did not like all the, he is, he loves, he's very food motivated, but he doesn't like strangers. So he didn't like people watching him and didn't like doing it. So he found Aww. something else. Cool. So how did you get started on this? I mean, uh, how did you learn? Did, were you self-taught? Were... So how I started is I signed up for, they called it a canine outdoor and obedience class. And so we went throughout the city. We went to different parks. We went downtown, like we rode the train. We went in office buildings. We did the elevator. We did urban agility downtown. And that kind of gave me more confidence to try all of these things. And I kind of dabbled in a little, I guess, a number of different things. Um, I also put just other otter hound owners. So his breeder is involved in tracking and some other activities. And then even reading on the Facebook page, some of the things that you guys have tried with them. Um, and I think, yeah, I just tried lots of things or Googled or heard about things at some of the fairs and just tried them. 
Fantastic. That's like the best uh -huh. way to learn, right? It's just Facebook. <laughs> yeah. So for all of these things that you do, are there titles? Are there awards? Do you have to earn, is there like a point system towards these? You know, how so, do you differentiate? So we do them for fun primarily. And the difference for us, we're in Canada. And so the AKC is great and they have tons of event and tons of title. It's a little bit different for CKC. That, that said, there's certainly there's a lot of different titles. You can look into things, Google them. And the one, I guess, positive with Corona is that a lot of them are doing them online now. So one of them in our call or our text earlier today, I saw for parkour, for example, you can do a lot of that online. So uh, it's something I will take from this meeting and look into. But right now we've just, I guess we've done things for fun and to be active. So I haven't even done that much. Rally is one day on my to try list. So we'll see. Cool. So do you have any sort of advice for any of those newbies that are kind of looking to get into the same systems? Hi, my advice would be, um, I guess the first thing I, maybe I was not, not nervous, but they're big, strong dogs. And for me, I didn't have the confidence on handling them or taking them all of those places. So for me, signing up for a class and learning how to manage them and how to best do some of the activities with them, how to, and learning, I guess, I guess building that relationship and trust with your dog and then learning. So he's very food motivated. So I know now that he'll do pretty much anything for food. And then <laughs> I think reach out to ask questions. So if, whether it be your breeder or if you're at an event asking other people, and also volunteering. So last weekend, if you were on uh, Otterham Lovers, I volunteered at a canine a good neighbor event. So that was an opportunity for me to see how it functioned, see how it worked and see if it's something I'd be interested in trying. And don't, I guess, yeah, the other piece too is a lot of, he's always the one of the largest dogs at a lot of things we go to. And I would say, don't let that deter you. He, um, we, I guess we were models or he demo, was a demo dog for downtown urban agility for dogs and every other dog was I mean there were chihuahuas and tiny dogs so but he I mean he still crouches down and he does everything and he if not if anything the some of the feedback from the pack walks is he's been fantastic in helping all of these dogs who were terrified of big dogs um learning that they're not all scary Aww. Tracy, Tracy? For yeah. those of us who have never heard of it before, can you just give us a little bit of description on urban agility or doggy parkour? Sure. What kind of activities and movements and stuff? Because a lot of people haven't heard of it. Sure. So what it, I guess, essentially is just using, um, so a formal agility would take place in a ring with only agility equipment. And urban agility is just really utilizing everything around you. So we get comments when we're walking in the park he jumps uh, or jumps up or steps on and off of benches over top of the bike barriers he yeah walks across logs he um, ducks under things and so it's just using things in the environment so if any park that you go to or if you go on a nature walk just utilizing everything around you um, it's a great way um, to make them I guess to make them use their minds and to make them more tired um and so yeah when we go anywhere for a walk we don't we rarely just do a walk he's stepping up and down on things and going around things and we're using everything around us just so that it makes things more interesting how do you get him to do those things do you use bait or treat or commands no i no we i guess i use commands um i don't use bait for most of the training we do i do it when he's first learning it um, but he's really eager to please and always excited to try things. And he's now at the point, if we're walking near a bench, he automatically goes on it and jumps off of it. He automatically walks along the logs. He just does all that because he thinks now that's what you're supposed to do when you see something. When you see a barrier, you duck under it or you jump over it. You don't go around it. So that's what he does now. Nice. Good survival skills. <laughs> yes. Uh, Cindy, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I'm mute. So, um, a friend of ours, we think, did you say pack walks? Is that when you put a pack on them of a certain weight? I've done, well, I've done, I, we do meetups 
where we, that's what I call right. a pack walk, where we meet up and walks. But I also, yes, I use a backpack on him as well. And is it weighted? Like a certain, it has to be a certain percentage of their weight? So you start off just with, depending on the pack you have, oh, I guess always start with it empty, just so they get used to how it feels on them. And then you'd slowly build up. Yeah, so it just, and it depends on the dog. Some of them, he doesn't seem to mind it. Some dogs don't like the feel of it. And then some of them, if they come as a harness, you just, you work up to it. And yeah, you can do up to a percentage of their weight. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way, especially if they're a big dog, it makes them tired quicker. So mm -hmm. as long as it's not really hot out, they do really great. And they can carry their own water and their own stuff, especially if you do camping and things like that. We have some friends of ours that do this and they get, they have Swissies and they get them together and the dogs carry the wine. And oh. then as they get, as they get to their first stop, then they, un they unload like, you know, X amount of bottles. And then they go, and then they go, and they go. But they they, they do it all day. I never cool. even thought of that. So thank there you. you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. All righty. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you, Tracy. No problem. Hi. Nice getting to know you, and welcome to the club. Thank you. All righty. All right. Next victim, Katie Wright. Go ahead and unmute your mic there. Maybe. Ah, there How's you that? go. Hello. Live oh, hello. from the open box. All yes. Right. So, Katie Wright, tell us, who are you? Who am I? Yes. Um, I'm, <laughs> I live in Battle Creek, Michigan. I have, well, the number just expanded, but I had two otter hounds, and now we added eight because we just had a litter born four days ago. Um, so I have Penny and Sassafras, and then we have the litter of the, uh, the, the Michiganders here. So we have eight of these little suckers running around. Um, so I am a medical speech, uh, speech pathologist working mainly with people after brain injury, stroke, dementia, um, pretty much any medical condition you can think of working on, uh, swallowing disorders and communication abilities. Um, What's the next question? What else do I oh. need to tell you? I'm oh, tired. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get a pass. No. Okay, so how long have you been in otter hounds and how did oh. you get involved in otter hounds? Well, Carmen, I don't know how I got involved. Um, so I grew up with Airedales, Airedale Terriers. Um, I got my first one as a surprise in sixth grade. Uh, my parents had had Airedales before that, but we were a military family moving around, so we couldn't have one when I was really young because we didn't want to have to place dogs or try to travel, you know, across the world with dogs. So um, we got, my mom surprised me with one in, in sixth grade, and um, her name was Sadie, and she actually shuffled her feet and kind of moved like an otter hound does. So, you know, I started really reading about um, the Airedale and the ancestry of the Airedale being um, linking back to otter hounds. And I was like, man, it'd be really cool to meet one of those one day. And that was kind of how I progressed until uh, graduate school. And then um, the lovely Facebook kind of connects people more than ever has before. And I found the Facebook page, Otter Hound Lovers. And I found the Lang family that lives 20 minutes from my house. <clears throat> and uh I messaged Carmen's mom Nancy and said hey can can I like meet one of your otter hounds I just wanted to meet one to say that I had met one and they said sure there's a big show coming up why don't you come and, and meet us I I thought dog shows were exclusive events I didn't know anyone could go in I thought you had to like be invited or something I didn't know how they worked um so I was like sure I'll come to a dog show so we went and um I met the the Langs dogs. I think you had Miracle and Dazzle mm -hmm. and Echo. And um, what I didn't know at the time, and so Nancy, they had a bunch of hounds there and they asked me to hold the lead and I thought it was like a golden lead. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm meeting an otter hound and I get to hold its lead at the same time. This is amazing. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, they kind of told me that there was a, a litter expected, but there was only a single puppy. And that single puppy was my penny who just gave us this litter of eight. So, um, yeah, so they, Carmen and her mom and, and Terry Goots and Cheryl Prattley wanted to make sure that whoever got this puppy 
had experience with the stubbornness that can be a singlet and growing up with terriers I kind of understand what they what they meant by that so um, Penny came home and then a couple years later there was an opportunity for me to really learn from Eileen Glennon and that's how I got sassafras so that's how I got my otter hounds it's been five years um, and I think the day after the puppies were born was my dog show anniversary so that was kind of yeah written in the stars no yeah so what fun activities do you do with these two hounds i know that's a loaded question <laughs> <laughs> um we do a lot we uh dabble in a lot of different things um i think tracy kind of mentioned a lot of the same stuff that we do um we've done cgc barn hunt um, I know that the focus of this is more away from confirmation, but I find confirmation fun. I compete as an owner handler in the owner handler series. Um, I do AKC and UKC. Uh, the group of hound people we have in Michigan, and I'm not just talking the otter hound group, but the hound people, we have a blast before and after the show and in the ring. I mean, we crack each other up. It, it's, that's, that's a ton of fun. Um, I've done scent work, we've done dock diving, which included swimming lessons, and Penny has actually been a trainer demo dog for instructors looking to be certified in rehab, in swim rehab, because they needed a large dog. And actually, it was really interesting, one of the <clears throat> trainers-to-be learned that she can't work with large dogs because holding on to Penny, Penny drug her across the pool. She could not, Penny was just too big for her to be able to hold. So. Um, definitely has been part of some breed education there. Uh, we've done, we've dabbled in some tracking, we've dabbled in rally. Um, we do enjoy camping and hiking. Uh, we do a lot, not a lot. We've done rustic camping and the dogs absolutely love that. I mean, what's better than being muddy and being allowed to sleep in a tent. Um, uh, we do different breed education events. Uh, we've done uh, lake swimming, um, I'm sure you guys have seen my mom's picture calendars that they put out every year. Uh, so we do um, calendars every year that, that the money goes towards different rescues, Airedale rescues, uh, canine cancer, and an otter hound fund of some sort. Um, we've done uh, dog education events at a preschool for dog safety. And we have taken an agility class and we've done trick dog. I'm sure there's something. But. <laughs> Holy Moses. All right, yeah. everybody. There's no excuse left. You got to sign up for something. But, <laughs> so you mentioned that you had Airedales beforehand, and I know that you've yeah. done a lot with those Airedales. So between Otterhounds and Airedales, is there a difference? In oh, oh. Um, so <laughs> uh, there is. So one way I kind of compare them is an Airedale will look at you and purposefully ignore you an otter hound won't even give you that courtesy. They just keep sniffing, they don't care. Um, <laughs> I, like an Airedale will purposely look at you and say, no, not happening. And, and the otter hound didn't even hear you say anything. Um, so so they, to me, that's a huge difference. Um, <laughs> the, the Airedale, so if you think of the history of an Airedale, an Airedale was actually one of the first police dogs used. So there is a certain amount of uh, biddability and in wanting to um, please or wanting to work with a person. An otter hound was meant to hunt with a pack, but independently. They weren't working to please the hunt master so much. They were out, you know, running ahead, doing their own thing. And, and I would say otter hounds still try to do their own thing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so what do you like best about some of the activities that you have listed? Um, what do I like best? I would say that being involved, being involved kind of allows you a better understanding of your dog. And, and as crazy as this sounds, um, definitely, oh, um, definitely allows you to actually kind of health test your dog as you go. I mean, if you're training, you know when your dog's slow, you know when things aren't picking up as quickly, you, you kind of get an idea if you're, you're grooming them or brushing them out, you can see any new lumps and bumps that are on them. Um, when I started confirmation training, 
I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't know if it was something I was going to stick with. And my thought the entire time was at least I have a dog that'll be able to stand for a vet exam. If I get nothing else out of it, I have a dog that can stand for a vet exam. So. Nice. I think she learned a few, a few other things along the way too. <laughs> so yeah. how, did you, how did you get started and how did you learn? Were you self-taught? You had mentioned a few mentors, wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, Carol and, uh, well, Nancy and Carmen and Cheryl and Terry Goots all were very influential. Um, so Nancy Lang challenged me. I was literally standing in their whelping box and she said, you know, I'd like to see this puppy do one match. And I was like, oh, I've seen him do dog shows on TV. That's easy. I can do that. It was not easy. Not at all. I went to a uh, local training um, center called Dog Zone. And there's this little older lady named Carol. And Carol runs this class. And she told me that on the first day I had, Penny was all over the place. I couldn't keep her head up. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even have a lead. And she said, you know, she'd seen where she'd seen a dog hump its handler around the ring. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like, I'm the prime example of bad, you know. And uh, the, the first show came up and all the grandmas showed up. My mom was there. Carol was there. Nancy was there. Terry was there. And I was like, oh, great. Now we're in the big leagues. Everybody's here to see what I've done with this puppy. Um, we survived. We lived. We, we didn't fall. So that was all I wanted. Um, so the other things that we've done, because I, I had experience with the Airedales, I kind of knew what I was doing. Um, we have done, for more formal events, we have done classes for like scent work, dock diving, stuff like that. Cool beans. So for things like, you know, dock diving, scent work, uh, and uh, like barn hunt, you know, uh, what are the titles, their awards, you know, is, what's the point system like, you know? Um, so each event has a different requirement. So for barn hunt, there is like an optional first uh, title, which is the, um, the instinct title where there's just three tubes with a rat in it, you kind of indicate on it. Um, and then it goes uh, instinct, novice, open, senior, uh, then the championship level master and then the championship level um i had worked up to a, a championship with my airedale and then i handed the reins over of the airedale over to my mom and started with penny and penny was actually the first otter hound with a barn hunt title so that was uh, pretty exciting for us um there's different levels to go through i know other people here do trick dog um trick dog also has different levels uh penny I didn't turn in the paperwork, but she did complete the intermediate level. She knows how to skateboard. Um, <laughs> I'm just very bad at paperwork. <laughs> um, uh, things like tracking, I really enjoyed I, working with Eileen. Eileen has done some more, um, that one formal class, and I'm sure she's done things before that I wasn't a part of. Um, we did an agility class. So th there is different, there's different levels for each one. Sweet. So for people looking to, uh, you know, go into a few more of these things with their hounds, uh, what kind of advice would you give them? Pitfalls, you know, things to look out for, stuff like that. I would be certain to know that, <laughs> Eileen says I want to see puppies. Um, <laughs> be certain that you're not going in with the expectation you're going to be the head of the class. Um, I think that their otter hounds are very capable. They can do anything almost any other dog can do, um, but it takes a different approach and know that, you know, there, there are some very knowledgeable trainers out there, but these dogs kind of require a sensitive touch at times. Um, they are not easygoing. I mean, they are easygoing, but they're not easy. Their training isn't always easy. They can master something in one repetition and be done, um, or some things might take a few more repetitions um but don't go in expecting that you're going to be you know the you're going to beat the golden retriever in class it might happen but as soon as you think you have a master they'll do something completely different yep so be prepared to laugh at yourself 
Oh my goodness. Sorry. I'm getting so many memories just popping up. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for sharing, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Yeah. Allison. And here, here's Eileen. <sighs> All right, Allison, your time has come. Oh, okay, I'm ready. All right, who is Allison Rosenberg? Well, so I live in this town called Irmo, which most people have never heard of, South Carolina, which is outside of Columbia. Yes, I have a northern accent. I don't know why it's with me. I was born in upstate New York when I was, I left it when I was 10. So maybe my formative puppy years were up there. Um, and I worked my daytime job. I worked at the University of South Carolina. I was a radiation safety manager. So that meant I, I was a regulator. So I wasn't, I was loved sort of. Um, we did the main campuses, the medical school. Then my night job was always something related to dogs. I was pre-vet in college, tried to get in twice, didn't quite have Carmen's brains. So um, then now, since I retired, in 2016, I'm now, I guess you could call me a professional dog trainer because people pay me. So um, with a specialty in puppies. Ooh. Very nice. I, knew, I might not have to ask you a couple of questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I have five, five dogs. I have um, three dachshunds, two otter hounds. I have Adler, who's five and a half. And then I have Adler's mom, Amira, now who I got back in January of last year. She decided Ohio was too cold and she wanted to retire in the South. So she came to live with me. She ain't the only one. <laughs> That's right. Um, That's right. So do you, do you have any two-legged kiddos? Um, no two-legged kiddos, just fours. Yes, just fours. So speaking of fours, uh, how long have you been in otter hounds and how did you get started? Well, I got started as just one name and you probably have all heard it. It's called Becky Van Houten. She, um, I've actually been in Otter Hounds for eight years. And it took me, like not now, but I wanted a puppy right about the time that she had her Civil War big 12. I followed that puppy every day and they were all taken. So I said, well, I'd like to get a puppy from Wicket. Well, we're gonna breed her again in two more years. Okay, I'll wait. There weren't, you know, the puppies, you know, 36, 30 puppies a year. So two years went, she had one male and one female and I was the number two male. So the breeder, the stud mom decided to take the boy. And I said, now what do I do? So there were a lot of, there weren't that many puppies. And so Allison, you still there? You kind of froze up on us. Everybody's in suspense. Oh, finally, um, I got a litter and sing I'm here. Oh, there you are. Okay, okay good. Continue. My, my internet kind of went boom. Um, I went to, um, before I got the Otter Hound, I went to the uh, Nationals at Chagrin Falls. I think that's maybe where I met you and your mom. And I remember walking to a room. This is kind of funny. Becky, our new president, Sarah, past president, Betsy Conway, whole group of women all drinking wine. I'm sitting there. And actually, Betsy walks through the door and she looks at me. She's talking, ignoring me. And then she says, why do you think you deserve an otter hound? I said, gee, I don't know, because I need an otter hound. So that's how it started. That's, and then finally, when I got Adler, it was the same time Katie and I, I remember, we were talking, we were both scared to death. We're going to break these dogs. We're going to do something wrong. We're going to get kicked out of the club. She's like, are you going to show? I think I'm going to show. I'm not sure I can show, but we can do it. I mean, it was, it, it was scary when you get one of these precious babies. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. You, br you braved the council, you know, you earned it. That's, that's right. That's it. <laughs> so of all the fun things you tell us of all the fun things you do with your dogs. Oh, so like not as much as Katie, but we, we've done agility, um, nose work, uh, tracking. We, we loved camping like everybody else. I do know that not all otter hounds like to swim, even though they used to. I was told they do if they have a purpose. Penny apparently likes it. And I think Laura's in Florida is the first I've seen actually in a swimming pool. But so mm. we, we, I try to get them in the water. We, um, what else do we do? Um, canine good citizens. We did the AKC star puppy 
I don't know if everybody's heard about that. Um, and we do a lot of meet the breeze. There's, there's only, for a long time, I was the only otter hound in South Carolina. And then now I think we have two or three around the state. Oh man, time for pack meetups. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, you said that you had other dogs. Yes. I know for a fact that a few of them are dachshunds. <laughs> yes, they are um, ones right there. Oh, oh, babies. But, so, uh, have you done certain, these similar activities with them? And if so, have they differed at all to otterhounds? Well, I second Katie's motion. I have, my, Murray is a little dachshund mix who, you know, when some dogs don't have, a, they're a mixed breed and you don't really know what they're good at, he just was active and we walked a lot, and I still were gonna try agility, and found out that here's a dog that wasn't bred for anything in specifically, you know, specific, but he loved it, and we had sports. So then fast forward to take Adler to agility, just like Katie said, we do it one time, we were so good, we did it the second time, we were so good, the third time, the instructor said, let's videotape him, okay, <laughs> yeah, no. We, we missed the dog walk, we ran around, we visited everybody, and then I finally got him back. So it's, and I said, he's not a Border Collie, he's not a Border Collie, he's not a Border Collie. Okay. And then you understand what you're working with. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. It's only one that you get to try and gloat over them that they're like, watch this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, what's your most favorite part about all these activities? Um, you know, the otter hound, as we all are finding out, is a very interesting breed. I love just with being with Adler, taking away from the pack. He's kind of my relaxation when I go away from the house and we just go on a long walk or through pretend tracking or going out in public, going to a, you know, maybe pet smart. People go, what is that? Can I pet him? And it's like, sure. So to me, that's, that's my favorite part of him. The dachshunds, everyone always loves little weenie dogs and they're, and they're hounds, but he's, he's just one of those ones that for me was my newest heart dog in a different way. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a different bond, maybe because I waited so long for him. And then when I finally got him, I didn't want to break him. I don't know. They're a lot hardier than people give him credit for. That's for sure. So. Uh, how did you get started and how did you start to learn? Were you self-taught? Did somebody mentor you? Um, yes, I was, I was somewhat self-taught, but I really got lucky. And I don't know if people have ever heard of um, a lady named Teodi Anderson. She's an author. She's on a lot of pet uh, talk shows. She was um, the Association of Professional Dog Trainers. She actually had her business here in Columbia. And it's kind of funny. I was teaching agility at the dog club and she had a tavern. Is that Belgian Tavern? And she wanted to take agility. And so I'm teaching her agility and we're talking and she says, you know, I'm looking for a mentor. I, I need some mentee actually um, to do some of basic obedience and stuff like that. So I got the privilege really to mentor under her while I was still working my day job. And then as soon as I retired, I kind of transitioned to that and said, you know, this is what I've always wanted to do. And now I get to do what I want to do. So she, she got me started and then I've taken online courses and classes at the club and stuff like that. What's that old saying? You find what you love and you don't work a day in your life. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You'll do that someday. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, uh, for agility and obedience, like you were talking about, uh, tell us about the titles, the point system, uh, yeah. How do you, how do you get that fan, those fancy letters on the end of your dog's name? So about the agility or more about the, do you want to talk about canine good citizens or just agility in general? Agility? Sure. Yeah. You can just okay. jump in wherever. All right. Yeah. So agility is a, is a leg. Um, you start as a novice and the best part about novice is they give you an opportunity to make like three mistakes and you can still get a qualifying score. So they get a little harder as you go up, but for every three legs, you get a title and it has to be under two different judges. There's so many different types of agility. So like Adler doesn't really like heights and the people that know the dog walk is really high and most big dog owners don't like to do that because it's, it's high up and they can fall. But they also have a jumper series now. They have a fast series, things that you can make up your own course and see how fast they can do it. So all of them are you know, legs to get, to get titles. 
Cool. So you said something about the canine good citizenship. Talk, let's talk about that. Okay. So everybody with all your puppies, one of the things about the canine good citizens, it's usually the first title that most dogs get. And there's the puppy, some clubs offer the puppies, um, all star, I guess it's called. And the biggest thing, really the take home, my message is that everyone with puppies, we have to start, the breeders do their job and then they go to you. And it's real important that if you wanna do agility, you know, I, I tease my agility friends and say, I got an outer hound to do agility. That's why I got that breed because they're gonna do agility. And they just say, you know, why didn't you get a, but is to start them now grooming, like, like Katie said, how many outer hounds love to have their beards brushed? Zero. <laughs> So you have, to, you have to continue to work. And the best part about Canine Good Citizens, it's a title, but it's not a competition. It's, it's like a measurement of how you and your dog work together. How well do they meet people? How do they handle when they go to the veterinarian? What happens when they see another dog? What happens if you have to leave them for three minutes and walk away? So to me, it's like a building, it's like a measurement. And then there's people that say, hey, may my otter hound would be a good therapy dog. It's also a good measurement to say, hey, he's good with this. Maybe we can do that. It's when, it's when you get the dog and say, I only want him to do agility. And then you realize he's afraid of noises or he you know, doesn't like other dogs around him. So that's, that's my take home. Those are some good tips too. So speaking of tips, yes. what... <laughs> What advice do you have for those starting out? You know, uh, are there suggestions, tips, pitfalls, you know, to make it easier for them to go into this field? Yeah, I think most people probably do. I, I say, as soon as you get your puppy, as soon as it gets its first set of shots, find a organized puppy socialization. Don't be afraid to take your puppy to like Lowe's and, and uh, tractor supply in, put them in a top. I mean, let's say forget COVID is the big issue, but put them, you know, on a, blanket in a cart, let him meet people, drive through the parking lots, let him see people, reward. Um, the, I, do, I do positive reward-based training. We know that dogs and otter hounds are not, they're kind of a soft dog. I know that some we get a little frustrated, but if you, some of them are just soft and they're going to shut down and they're not going to. So my advice is find a good puppy, do basic training, do advanced training, work on socialization as much as possible, handling, and that's going to be the key to whether or not they like to confirmation, whether they want to do agility, or, you know, they just want to be a couch potato and just be a good home pet. You know, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. And, and thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Unfortunately, You're welcome. <laughs> unfortunately, Tom Devlin has not joined okay. us. Yet. So, Robin? We have a couple questions. Oh, yay. So we have a question first. Um, what is everybody's favorite activity of all of those things that you do? Do any of you have like one specific favorite that you like? And the other question is, if you live in a city, how do you find a barn hunt? Um, so that's a good, good question as well. And I know I'll just throw out there, the AKC is a great source for a lot of dog activities from agility, barn hunt, dock diving, they all encompass a lot of events and you can search that on their um, <laughs> website. But I'd like the, everybody else to answer that, how you find a barn hunt, and then what is each of your favorite activities of all the things you do? Um, I can answer the barn hunt question. I actually am a member of a barn hunt club in a city. <laughs> so um, barnhunt.com has a search feature and you can search for any clubs local to you. So I know it sounds like it's a really rural activity, um, but any, we do it in the middle of a kennel club, like in a normal training building. It doesn't have to be out in an actual barn. Um, I actually think it's harder to barn hunt in a real barn because um, I've done it in a llama barn before, and that's uh, difficult because there's so many more smells. So <laughs> um, it, it, it can, it's an event that takes place all over in every kind of environment. They just have to have the required space. So um, don't, be, don't be hesitant if you live in a city. Um, there's barn hunts all over the country in Canada. And a lot of barn hunts are even at confirmation shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you yep. see agility at confirmation shows, trick dog 
testing and yeah. confirmation. So CGC, doc diving, a lot of oh. those are in conjunction with AKC shows. So even if you don't do confirmation, you can go to any of those things at a confirmation show. Right. Um, a lot of them also have fast cat and lure coursing um, outside of them. So right. that's I'll, great. I'll Wait, never right. forget, I was showing my friend's uh, curly coated retriever and we had to go into the group ring and I told her, don't let her barn hunt. And she still did. And this black dog came out with hay stuck in all of her curls. <laughs> all out. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Oh, so I think, you know, I know he was bred for tracking. And so I, th I forgot if it was Tracy that said that, but we, we, I took him to a nose work class thinking, my, like you said, my dog is going to be the best one in the class. He, he went up to the first box. He was like, yeah, no, this is really boring. I, I just, I don't like it, but he loves tracking. If I just throw something down or if I walk around somewhere, it's, it's a lot of fun, but I've lately been working with on obedience. And sometimes when the command goes in his head, rounds a little bit, and then he goes, okay, oh, I'll sit. It's really rewarding. It takes, you know, it's rewarding. So we're, we're working on our competition maybe for obedience. So we'll see. Cool. Tracy, do you have a favorite? I, we're really lucky to live uh, less than an hour from the Rocky Mountains, from Banff and places like that. And so hiking, because it's just absolutely beautiful. And yeah, it's very peaceful and relaxing and he gets lots of smells, so he likes it too. Nice. All righty. We have a couple more questions from the participants. Um, at one, one question is, at what age should a puppy start agility? At, or at what age would they be old enough to start agility? Anybody? Uh, yeah, you, you can't compete. I think this current rule is you cannot compete until they're 15 months old. And with otter hounds, they, me they measure, there's different jumping, there's eight inches, 10, 12, whatever. So with otter hounds that most of them are at 26 inches, more than likely we wouldn't wanna jump our dog at 26. So they have what they call a preferred category and I think think you can go down to 18. I'm, I was going to ask Tom what he was jumping Creed at, but, um, but to start practicing in the puppy class and, and when you, some of the puppy classes will start with wobble boards or walking, getting some rear end awareness. There's all kinds of little tricks that can start anytime. If you want to put a little jump in your backyard, you just keep it four inches off the ground. It's not, it's not about the height. It's about getting the um, skill. So they can't compete and then they have to get measured. But luckily for us, by the time the Otter Hound's a year old, they're about pretty much as big as they're going to get tall wise. So plan on jumping, you know, the 18 inches if that's your thing. Was that the answer? Was that all for that one? I think so. And boy, can they fly with those ears. Jeez. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we have another question. Has anybody tried lure coursing before? We have. Um, <laughs> Uh, I did it with Sassafras, and she was baying, you know, like watching the other dogs going. And all my dachshund friends told me this was a great idea. Um, so I was, you know, pumped to do this because Sass was so interested. She took off and did the straightaway super fast. Well, not compared to the sight hounds that are actually meant to do it. Um, but she was going and about halfway through, she was trying to track it rather than watch it. And the, um, the guy running the lure said, well, it's not very fast, but I guess she's going. So uh, we didn't complete the course because she stopped. But I can say that this is where her obedience training came into play. She was in the middle of a field and I was actually able to call her back to me and she did a full front sit right in front of me. <clears throat> so, you know, she was out in the middle of a field and she wanted to take off. There's been no way I would caught her so thank you katie um so i think carmen might have a story about lower cursing oh, too oh, yes, does. I will that. oh boy oh boy uh yes like everybody else uh we we had an old boy by the name of gabe 
Uh, and he was a moose. He was about 29 inches at the shoulder and 126 pounds. And he absolutely loved to run. Like you, I mean, you could set him, we have a full acre and a half fenced in. And if you just let him go, he would run for hours if you let him. And so my mom and I said, he likes to chase the vulture shadows, you know, going overhead. So why can't he, you know, go after some bags? So we set him up. You know, he's sitting there watching him. He, he starts, you know, getting really super amped up and I let him go and he bolts and he's going full speed, you know, a hundred feet and the flags go left and he goes straight. And I'm like, oh my God, cause how am I going to catch up to this? I'm running after him in my silk dog show suit. You know, it's 90 degrees. I'm like, ah, Gabe, come back. And <laughs> he takes a right and decides to pee on a porta potty and I caught him. So we were, all ready, <laughs> we were all ready to run after him. Yes, there was about a mob. There was a mob behind me, you know, yelling Gabe. But that's our lure course experience. <laughs> the only other time I tried it with Jojo and it was a little loop and she got lost. She kind of lost track of everybody through the uh, snow fencing and she just kind of sat going, now what do I do now? So... <laughs> We've done fast cat with Ellie, um, and that's just where they run down a straight tile, a straight tunnel, following the bags. And she did great at that. Um, she really enjoyed it. She was too young at the time to go for a title. Um, you have to be 12 months old for a title, and she was not yet 12 months old. Um, but she enjoyed that. We've done lure cursing with her on a uh, like a fun day at a dog club. And that was not so much fun because she did not really understand that she was supposed to keep chasing the bag. She just wanted to run off. And then that was, was kind of like, no, Ellie, come back. Um, we have a couple questions on um, tracking. And Eileen Glennon also has some advice on agility for dogs. So Eileen, if you will unmute and share your knowledge with us, that would be fantastic. I would be very careful. I mean, you can start a puppy as yeah when you get it on a lot of things, but I would not jump an otter hound at all till it's over a year. And then I would not jump it over 12 or eight inches until its growth plates close. Um, simply because of the stress on the dog, especially the front end, these are big, heavy dogs and there's, they're puppies. So the trouble with agility um, I'm going to say something, people will hate me, is these are very big, heavy dogs. And so um, the preferred, the lowest an adult can jump is tw 20 inches. And, um, you know, that's like in an open course, that's 18 jumps landing on its front legs. So, um, you know, I would be you can do a lot of things, the tunnels you can do, but I would not jump a young otter home puppy just a you know um just just a warning <laughs> thank you for that advice Eileen. we appreciate that mm -hmm. and then there's a question on how to get started in um tracking or intro to checking so maybe you could touch on that for us too we're going to have a tracking otter talk um probably in september so and eileen will be our featured panelist for that one um but maybe you can just touch on that for us for the participants here well, there's, I start my puppies at about seven weeks, eight weeks, you know, um, and um, I start them following people um, because that's, I don't do barn hunt. My dogs are following people. Um, I do it. I first got interested because I got an otter hound and um I think one of the first nationals I went to, I, I wasn't showing, I had a rescue. I saw somebody who was in the ring with her nose, with the dog's nose on the ground. And I said, huh, that dog, you know, was interesting. And they said, oh, that's a search dog. And came to find out that the person who had it is very famous in the search world. But um, so I got intrigued and I started working actually many years ago with uh, the lieutenant of the county sheriff's department and his bloodhounds. Then I got a confirmation dog and I got away from it. And then I went back to AKC tracking and then I went from there to search again. 
I think the best way to do it is to get somebody out there, find somebody to lay a trail. I am a, uh, in many ways an academic, but I'm a kinesthetic tracker. I have to see it work. And so what I would suggest if you're interested, go to the AKC website, look under tracking judges and find the closest one to you. They don't do a lot of classes, some places do, but most of it's individual work. So that's, um, or you can come to Purina Farms next spring when we'll be doing lots of fun things, including introduction to tracking. <laughs> and, um, but basically there's a lot of ways to start, but um, what you want to do is let the dog realize that the best thing in the world is, is finding somebody, find, following a track and they love it. They're just happy. They're just happy when they've got following their nose. Wouldn't you say, Allison? So. Aw, that's so darn cute. Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, we've got some interest in fly ball. Uh, Bev, I don't know if you wanna unmute and talk a little bit about that. Okay, uh, fly ball was fun many years ago, but otter hounds are not one of the fastest to jump over the, set, the hurdles. So what it is, is it's like sand hurdle racing again, and that's Canadian titles. Fly ball is North America, and I believe I have the only fly ball titled otter hounds. And this jumps over four jumps, hits the box, grabs the ball, and runs back, and it's in a competition with four dogs, and the fastest team, win, win, fastest team keeps going on. So it, it's fun. Training was interesting because I had otter hounds <laughs> and not the uh, border collies. Um, I don't know. Training, I had to teach my dogs to force retrieve and that was using the ear pinch. In most cases, otter hounds sometimes don't like ear pinches and they have such a high threshold of pain that the ear pinch doesn't work. So you have to really work with your dog. And once they learn it and it becomes fun, then they're all out for it. I've done a lot of this, the demos with my dogs and they're always up and competitions. Never, but always for fun because, because otter hounds aren't fast. <laughs> um, and then scent hurdle racing is a Canadian event. They're still doing that. Um, I believe I have the only otter hounds again that have those Canadian titles. And what it is, it's basically the same as fly ball where there is a team of four dogs where they jump over the, the jumps and they have to scent and find their own scented dumbbell and bring it back. Ooh. Um, the so best way we train the scent is they scent it not, is to scent their own. So it wasn't our scent on them because sometimes you ran two dogs in your own two dogs in one competition so you had to we they scented their own dumbbells so they were in their own mouths and they went to find their own dumbbells so bev uh when you when you describe it as being in a group uh does the entire group get one leg if they pass or is it still all individual per dog um with fly ball and fly ball is north america um, it's not Canadian or American, so it's not really recognized by the AKC, but it's a North American competition. Um, team of four dogs. Uh, it's based on time. It doesn't, um, for the titles, um, I believe if your team is under 25 seconds, that's five points. Um, so you get points whether you win or lose your competition. It just becomes a competition for the top dogs, for the top win of the day, like a best in show win. But you cool. still get points along the way. Um, <clears throat> my best dog, my best fly ball dog was my tri-male sergeant. Um, he was hot. He, they said he was on and off the box in half a second. Of course, it wasn't good on his shoulders, but he sure had fun. <laughs> I'm sure Jojo would love it if it spat out treats instead of tennis balls. Uh, yeah, okay, I get that. <laughs> but, all right, do we have any more questions, Robin? We have a comment about temperament testing. Um, 
that is also a cool thing, activity. And we do that with our Black Russians. Um, Marilyn also has uh, uh, mentioned that. Um, so Marilyn, if you want to um, unmute your microphone, you're more than welcome to tell us about temperament testing. Otherwise, I can tell my experience with it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy sure. to tell my one and only experience with, uh, with Gable. And it was several years ago, maybe three years ago, um, we were at a regular AKC confirmation show. And I have, I have great friends, all my friends have big, big dogs. So my friends who have Great Danes and Mastiffs and St. Bernards, were all doing temperament testing. And, and one of them said to me, you know, Gable's a good candidate for it because he's pretty calm. And I, I, you know, he had, he was young to get his CGC and, you know, he's a grand champion already. So what do you do when you have nothing planned for the rest of the afternoon until groups? So we went over and signed him up. Um, and I sat there and watched a couple of other dogs with him so that I could see what the, what the um, process was. And it really is similar to, um, canine good citizen, but there's a complexity of different things that happen. One of them in particular, first of all, the dog has to be without you longer than the three minutes for um, CGC. Yeah, I think it was 10 or 15 minutes that he had to sit there uh, with a perfect stranger and I had to disappear. But additionally, there was a guy dressed like out of one of those horror movies. I mean, just Chuck or Big Red Nose or joker or whatever who jumped out and actually scared the shit out of me but um just jumped out and went, like that and gable looked at him and said um okay let's play and the other the other thing that was so interesting to me was the shooting of a gun and um how does the dog react to this big loud bang and i can tell you that uh, his only experience with noises similar to that would have been on the 4th of July when people would set off fireworks, but that's in the comfort of your own home um, without, you know, without being a strange place or anything. And the, the gun went off and it was very, we were in a very big building that had open sides, but it reverberated off of the metal roof. And it was loud. And again, I was astonished at how calm he was at um, having that experience. He did, he did look around, but he didn't react in any negative way. Those were the two things that stood out the most for me. Um, I think if you have a jittery dog, if you have a dog that isn't mature and um, hasn't been on display uh, with a lot of people or in different experiences, it might not be successful, but we went in cold and, you know, I, I love the fact that his responses were mature and, um, and, and it made me have real confidence in, in his good breeding, because I do think it takes a well-bred dog in order to, to go through something like that. So um, I don't know how you get into it. I mean, I, I, I walked into it backwards just because my friends were there and brought me in, but it was at an AKC show. I can answer that one as far as how you get into it. It's um, actually the American, um, it's the Rottweiler people that um, actually started it. And it's the, uh, I think it's ATTS, American Temperament Testing Society. Um, and usually it's Rottweiler people that started in like, as black Russian owners, we'll have um, black Russian uh, at our nationals or at a supported entry or, or just like a, Breeders Home will have them come and do a temperament test for us. It's available for any breed, but it's primarily geared to working dogs and guarding breeds. It's, over, it's for any dog over 18 months old, and it's a series of 10 stations that they go through from a friendly stranger all the way to a scary bad guy that comes running at you. And it's how the dog responds to each one of those 10 stations. And uh, they're rated between one and five from no reaction to biting the guy. Um, and so for most breeds, you kind of want the, on the low side, the, you know, like wagging their tail. But for like a guarding breed, you are expecting more towards the, you know, 
very much um, on guard kind of reaction, but they kind of gear it towards whatever breed you're uh, doing it with. One of the times we did it, we had a little Chinese crested that was right ahead of us. Um, and it was really cool just to see the little tiny dog <laughs> doing the temperament test with all these, you know, Great Danes and Black Russians and Rottweilers and Dobermans and stuff. Um, but it is open to any dog and it is kind of cool. It's kind of cool to see um, your results. They also, they also make them walk over different uh, uh, ground. So you have like plastic, you have a um, X pen laid down on the ground. They have to walk over that. Um, at all the temperament tests that we've been to, most of the failures of the test were because the dog refused to walk over the, either the plastic or the X pen. Um, Each stage is geared to add yep. stress to the dog. So yep. by the time they get to the end, They're it's a, a stressful situation yep. and the dog bit. is amped up. Yep, yep. That's, For those of you who true. don't know, that's Charlie Keeling. Charlie Keeling. <laughs> There isn't some voice from ne the nether, you know. Yes, God. <laughs> Good talk. Um, the other question that we had was on, um, we had another question. I was sure. Oh, I think I see it. Uh, can you explain the difference between nose work and tracking? And scent detection. Allison, unmute. Okay, okay. I'm unmuting. Wait. Thank you. Am I, am I unmuted? Yes? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll, I can talk about nose work and Eileen can talk about tracking. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what's the difference between nose work and tracking? So nose work, nose work for AKC is based on different scents that the dog is trained to, just like the bomb dogs or the drug dogs. They pick, you start off novice is birch, then there's anise, or I call it, you can call it anything you want. So it smells like licorice. And then um, birch, anise, clove, cypress. So at each stage, when you're a novice dog, you just, you train like you would anything else. You're tracking for a scent, you're tracking for, you're smelling for that particular scent. And then what they do is once you get that scent, then you can use different um, receptacles for it. Start off with just boxes, then it goes into tins, and then they also have they have containers. They have scent detection um, outside. There's um, exterior, interior. So they make it harder, and there's more searches. So that's nose work is a specific scent, and then tracking Eileen. Tracking is teaching a dog to follow a specific scent, a uh, human scent, and to ignore all other scents. So that if you start out AKC tracking, your dog has to um, do a 440 yard track to 500, half an hour to two hours old, um, three to five turns, get to the final article, the glove. And then it gets more complicated. We go up to three to five hours. We have distractions like um, two people walk across the track for, in a more, um, after a much more recent than the track is laid. And the dog has to, of course, ignore those because it's following one particular scent. Um, Basically, I guess I would say that both scent work and tracking is the AKC version of, as Allison said, um, you train a scent, uh, scent work probably like you train an explosive dog, uh, a drug dog, a cadaver dog. Okay, they are trained to indicate, they have a, a specific trained response for a particular odor. Tracking is following a trail. And so uh, AKC tracking teaches you to follow a trail. The oldest trails are five hours. So um, they're not that old really, but um, you know, they get more complex as you go along, just like scent work does. We do have another question for both of you. Can you both track and nose work at the same time? Eileen will say no. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't say no? You wouldn't say no? You could say they could do both? I have a dog who, I've had dogs who are certified cadaver dogs and certified scent-specific trailers. 
Yeah. Same. So thing. yeah. So it's like, um, mm -hmm. yes, they can, but it's it's a different activity. It's one of the things. The positive for an otter hound, if they track, and you know that the dog going ahead of you in the nose work search is good, they go in and they follow the scent of the other dog, and then and they find the stuff faster. Just a little. Oh man, yeah. tricky hounds. Tricky hounds. I think the one thing I've said I would never do is I would never do barn hunt. Barn hunt. That's, I knew it was one of the two that you were, I didn't want them to change. To follow, find a critter. The other one, my dogs have to ignore critters and follow a, hu a specific human. So I don't want to train them to follow a rat because what if there's a rat when we're following a person? Problem. So That's true. That's true. Critters, so, especially on exteriors and stuff, you have to ignore all the critters and keep looking for like the birch or whatever mm -hmm. oil you're looking for on that specific mm -hmm. trial. So good points, everybody. Any more, any more questions from anybody in the audience? If so, feel free to either write them in the chat box or unmute your microphone. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I Cindy- I like to say something. Yes, there's Cindy. I was just <laughs> then. Um, so in order for us to help you, what things that we talked about tonight would you like to know more about? Would you like to see demonstrations on as we've moved forward? Um, how can we help you? And you know, what things intrigue you? Is it tracking? Is it nose work? Is it barn hunt? Is it, um, you know, I think uh, Carmen wanted to do lure coursing, I think. And, um, <laughs> but like, is it fly ball? What, what things can we do to help you? You know, what are you interested in? Great question, Cindy. And that goes for the otter talks too. Um, anything that you want to see in a future otter talk, otter talk, we'd love to hear from you on that too. Um, while you're thinking of those answers, um, I just want to thank everybody who's here tonight. We're going to follow it up with an open chat. Um, so I'm just going to thank everybody that is here. So if anybody has to leave, um, I get to thank them for being here right now. Um, also, we'll be posting a uh, video uh, link to this meeting on groups IO. If you're not an Otter Hound Club of America member yet, um, that's one of the benefits of being a member. A member, you have access to all of the old voice newsletters, the um, uh, all of the different uh, files and everything that the club stores on that site. Um, also, the next Otter Talk we'll have is probably either going to be on agility or a open puppy chat group. We haven't decided that yet. And then down the road, we have the national speakers going to be speaking for us on September, I'm sorry, August 27th. And then we're gonna follow that up with a uh, seizures otter talk, um, just a casual, uh, what's it like to have a dog that has seizures and how do you cope with that? So those are in the uh, future for the otter talks. Um, also, if there's anything that you are good at or you wanna share your knowledge with the group, please let us know um, if you'll be willing to be a panelist. It's easy, it's fun, and we rely on each other to share their knowledge. So it'd be great if you could volunteer for that. Um, so with that being said, I think I'll just open it up for group chat and any questions and answers. So we have lots of questions. Buckle up, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love to see it. So feel free to unmute yourselves if you want, or if you if it gets too cluttered, we can just always you can go by raising your hand as well. But for the most part, let's just go through these questions and and then we'll just have you open it up as we go. Um so Cindy. Okay, so we're done with Cindy. Cindy talked out loud. And I, I am, this is exciting, all the stuff that's coming up here. So I'm handing that over. I was just, I wanted to get <laughs> the conversations going. I'm trying to write them all down, you guys. This is great. And we can save this chat too, so we have it. Um, so Dan wants to know, um, tracking, dock diving, specifically how to get started with the dock diving. So um, maybe Katie, since you dock dive, maybe you can answer that one for him. Oh, she's trying. I think there's a puppy or two in the way. Uh -huh. All right. Hey, guys. 
Sorry, we're in the middle of a, a meeting. Um, and they keep going everywhere. So to get started in dock diving, um, one of the biggest things is uh, to find a pool near you or a club that's doing dock diving near you. Um, I know a lot of us like to hike and camp, so just a fair warning that swimming in a pool is way different to a dog than swimming in a lake. In a lake, they can't see the bottom, um, so it looks more solid. Where in a pool, I got we're in a pool, it like continues on forever. So you do have to get them acclimated to a pool. Good advice, Katie. Thank you. We've had that same experience where our our otter hound loves to swim in a lake, but in a pool, she tries to get to the bottom, which yes. is a little bit disconcerting. Um, so we have one more question from Mackenzie Schley. Um, she would like to hear more about search work and the training that goes behind goes beyond AKC tracking. Eileen, maybe you want to talk about that? And Tracy Seals has the same question. She would like to learn more about search and rescue and cadaver dog training and certification. So that's right in Eileen's category as well. And Eileen will be doing a uh, tracking otter talk with us in September. So you need to stay tuned for that one as well. Eileen, can you answer those? You're on mute, Eileen. Eileen, you're on mute. <laughs> the main difference is there's no rules in search and rescue. I mean, obviously, there's an endpoint. There's a glove at the end or an article at the end. You know you have certain things, certain number of um, cross tracks, certain articles, all of that in AKC tracking. In search, you have no idea. I mean, you don't know the direction of the track. You don't know anything. So it um, takes a lot of training, I would think. Um, dogs need to be certified. Um, certified search dogs are called out by police. A good search team will never show up, no matter what, without being called by the authorities. So you work with the police, you work with sheriffs, you work with FEMA, ISARC, places like that. Um, we do have to be certified. We certify, our team certifies, and we certify nationally every year. Um, yes, dogs do water search for uh, drowning victims. I spent the last, last weekend on a boat with Spirit. Um, and, um, you know, they're using a lot of sonar, but where I live, there's a lot of mucky rivers and a lot of debris in it, which makes sonar very difficult. So um, dogs are still used a lot for water, for looking for drowning victims. Um, often dogs are specialized. They'll either specialize in cadaver, land in water, or search, uh, trailing. Uh, we tend to cross train, but you never cross train them. In other words, you don't do bomb and drug dogs on cadaver usually. So how hard is it to volunteer for search and rescue, Eileen? Um, it well, it took me with a certified dog to be accepted to a team. Um, but it's a, you know, um, so if you're interested, find a team near you, go up, offer to be a runner. Um, don't expect them to train your dog if you're just a um, You have to be a team member to be training, you know, just because they, they have to keep the dogs up. But... Um, if you're interested, go see it. See if you're interested because this is something where you're called out 24 hours a day, seven days a week, usually at night. We've been called out in snowstorms. We've been called out when it's 98 degrees. So, you know, um, be careful with the commitment. It's a real problem. And I will add a little bit.
sorry. <laughs> uh, for one of my experiences back in ye olden days when I was back in 4-H, um, I actually was a volunteer for a search and rescue group. Uh, I was the missing person. And let me tell you, it is really fun to see every other dog go underneath you in this tree and the otter hound to come up 10 minutes later, plunk their butt and look straight up at you. So it's, I mean, it's, I respect it a great deal, you know. All right, do we have any other questions? Ah, if my mouse wants to work. So Marie wants to know more about agility, dock diving, and nose work. And uh, Lindsay Jameson Powell says she can help with nose work as she is a, um, a NW, a -N -W -I with the N-A-S-C-W. So <laughs> try saying that five times fast. And one thing I, that I'll just throw in too, as far as like tracking, like search and rescue and cadaver and, and water rescue and stuff like that, there's tracking for fun and then there's tracking, serious tracking. Um, so even if you don't want to uh, search and rescue or have a human remains detection dog, you can track for fun just for articles and that's pretty easy to learn and they love to do that. And it's not, it's not as stressful as having to um, be on a team and um, being called out. Not that that is not admirable. I think that's the most admirable thing in the world. But I know that we do fun tracking with Ellie where she just tracks and finds the glove and has like cross tracks and stuff like that. So a little bit two different things where you can track without having to do search and rescue or, or cadaver work or human uh, remains detection. So that's just my own two cents. Um, so anybody else want to talk to um, Marie about agility, dock diving, and nose work? Okay, so let me ask, do I, if I go to the AKC website, will they give reputable um, places to train and get taught how to do these things? You know, I don't want to just go to the yellow pages and pick, you know, Mary Jo's dog training class to go to and then find out that, you know, maybe it wasn't the most reputable one to bring Merlin to. Um, you know, the person that I worked with and the group that I worked with for Gandalf is long gone. And so, you know, I'm a little bit at loose ends on how do I find a good, you know, trainer for, uh, you know, let's say agility or dock diving. Um, I'm going to give one piece of advice and then anybody else can chime in. Um, I think, and what, how we get involved in a lot of the things, is we go to an AKC event. So not even necessarily with your dog, but you can go to a tracking event. You can see the people that are trying to get their titles. You can speak to them, speak to the judges, speak to all of those participants. And that's a great way to get knowledge, especially about clubs and training facilities that are in your area that are reputable and successful. That's, that's my two cents. Um, whether it's dock diving, whether it's scent work, whether it's tracking, whether it's lure coursing, any of that stuff, go watch it and talk to the people that are doing it and get their advice, pick their brain. I would um, also mention that a good way to find trainers is Facebook, actually. There's a lot of groups that have um, either statewide or region-wide groups just for those events, and that would be a good way to reach out to find a trainer. Thank you. I can contact, I can put you in touch with a couple of agility groups in the area. Great. Good. Yeah. Um, okay. I think you're probably closer to Cardinal. I don't remember exactly where you live, but um, there are, and there's a very good trainer in Compton Hills. Okay, great. Thank you. Did you have your hand up, Lindsay? There we go, got it unmuted. Um, for scent detection, go to the NACSW website and they have all their, um, they're the only ones that have accredited trainers. So you, we go through a training course, that's it. So they have all the trainers in the United States listed there. So you can just go to your area and find this instructor. Great. Uh, 
um, all righty. Is there any more questions, comments, concerns, just stuff off the top of your head you want to talk about? Because it's last minutes. Um, I just want to kind of encourage everybody to go out there, try something new with your dog that you never thought you'd do before. And, um, don't be discouraged. We all, anyone that does anything with an otter hound has many funny stories about things that have happened and you're not going to be perfect the first time or eight times or 20 times you do it, but go have fun and, and feel free to laugh. Mm -hmm. yep. The funny yeah. stories come from being unsuccessful more than they come from being successful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Got a boatload of those. <laughs> one thing I could just suggest for those of you who go on to your CGC, one thing that I think otter hounds are very good at because they're cute is uh, therapy work. Right. Um, they're wonderful with kids. They're wonderful with seniors. Um, and I, you know, if you can get a seat, I think you should sincerely work on obedience and think about going on. And it's very rewarding to take a dog into therapy work. And it's very rewarding on the other end too, because we've had therapy dogs come in during finals week and that was my saving grace. Yeah. We see they're smart. They go to college. <laughs> but Oh, well, all right, everybody. Thank you so, so, so much for all the questions and intrigue. And we learned just as much from you guys as you learned from us. So yeah, thank you to our panelists for being our experts. We appreciate it, especially when you have little tiny babies there, Katie. I appreciate it. <laughs> One last. Tracy and Allison as well. Oh, thank you. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, look at oh, an hour of baby watch. <laughs> there you go. I'm looking at chops. <laughs> okay, you're so cute. Oh, we'll Thank back. you, Come everybody, on. for coming. Welcome. Thank you. Right. Thank you. We'll see Thank you next you. time. Yep. <laughs> Happy belated birthday, Carmen. Happy oh, birthday, Carmen. Thank you. Did you say you were 25? I am. I'm a quarter oh. of a century years old. Oh. Wow. I remember being 25. <laughs> yeah, I think I do too. I could ask my grandson what it was like to be 25. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, I'll party harder when it comes to my 50th. Don't worry. Good. Oh, there you go. There, there you go. go. Some of us will be here then, though. <laughs> <laughs> and sure, sure we will. And hopefully oh. the pandemic to, con to, uh, to contend with when you're 50. Oh yeah, knock on wood, please. The only pandemic I 